Zombie child is an issue where you see some inconsistencies between parent and child components that happens only temporarily, but it can cause errors. For example, suppose we have a store with a count property. A parent component uses the count value from the store. This is 20 Minute JavaScript, a weekly show where I, your host, interview members of the JavaScript community about all topics concerning JavaScript. The 20 Minute JavaScript show is brought to you by Open Replay, an open source session replay platform meant for developers. If you'd like to know more, visit openreplay.com. If you'd like to be on the show or suggest a topic, find us on Twitter at the20minutejs. Welcome to episode 33, I'm Fernando, and today we're going to be talking about state management with Sustan. If you don't know what Sustan is, it's a tiny state management library for React, and who better to discuss it than its main maintainer, Daishi Kato. He's a developer from Japan, and he's here to tell us all about Sustan. So, welcome to the show, Daishi, thank you for coming, and please, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Daishi Kato. I live in Tokyo, Japan. I do freelance work and my day job is related to web application development using React. My recent effort is more in open source software development. I have been doing OSS development for decades and especially since React Hooks is announced, my focus has been libraries with React Hooks. I was interested in some problems in global state libraries. One issue for me is memo memoizing selectors. Selector itself is fine, but using it for render optimization sometimes requires memoizing functions. I feel it's really unintuitive. Another issue for me is React context propagation. It's well known these days, but context propagation is not suitable for global state implementation. To solve those issues, I developed a few libraries, and one outstanding one is called React Tract. It's a library that follows the use state and use context pattern and provides automatic render optimization. Meanwhile, I joined the Poimandres team where people develop React Spring, React 3 Fiber, Zustan, and so on. Since then, I've been the main developer of Zustan. Zustan is great, but there is one little thing left for me. It doesn't solve the selector issue. For more complex selectors, you need to memoize them. That leads to me and us to build another library, Jotai, and another one called Balsio. All right, perfect. It seems that you're actually quite active on the React state management space, to be honest. But today we're going to be talking about Sustan specifically and what it means for and what it means for the you know state management space and what can you get as a developer by using it so let's focus and let's start on the at the beginning so yep. uh, can you kind of give a brief explanation of what is sustain and especially like you said you're not the creator of it but you're the main maintainer of it so why keep working on it why move it forward considering how many alternatives are out there right now when it comes to state management. Yeah. Zarstan is a very tiny library for creating global state for React with hooks. It's very small. It's so small that I don't think it even needs to be a library. It's also known as an unopinionated library. People understand how it works and how, how to use it, how to use it pretty easily. There are many alternatives out there and I even myself developed several ones. Among those, Zustan is outstanding for its small size. We will keep it small because it's almost 
the reason why it exists. That means anyone can create a similar library. So as well as keeping it small, we also focus on TypeScript support. Zastan API was not developed with TypeScript first. So typing the API correctly is very challenging. Our TypeScript code is maybe three or four more times larger than what will be written in JavaScript. All right, interesting. Uh, so you added TypeScript support later then. Was it to serve a specific purpose? Was it to add type safety into the state management space like others are doing? Or essentially why else go through the trouble of adding so much code into it just to support TypeScript? I think it, it's written in TypeScript from the beginning, but it the middleware usage is designed without TypeScript in mind. That's my guess. Or we can say the middleware often modifies a store itself, which is generally not TS friendly. So in V4, we added the full TypeScript support with middleware. All right. So moving forward, what benefits do you get as a developer from using Sustan? Uh, instead of one of the alternatives. Yeah, as I said, Zustan is small. Being small means developers can easily read the code and understand it. So one of the biggest benefits is its understandability and predictability. These are less discussions about how it should work. How it works now is the correct behavior. In this sense, its JavaScript implementation is very mature. All right. So you're saying that the focus is developer experience, essentially. You're providing like a simplified yet powerful way of dealing with state instead of having to use like big libraries like Redux. Are there no other benefits such as I don't know, performance, flexibility, customization? Yeah, it's pretty simple. And I think the biggest benefit is its size. It's extremely small. I can just show in a tweet. No other similar library can beat it. All right. Uh, <laughs> interesting that it fits in a tweet. <laughs> so on the readme of the project, actually, you call it a small, fast, and scalable bare bones state management solution using simplified Flux principles. So that last part got my eye. What are the exact principles from Flux that you're taking into Sustan? Yeah, to be honest, because I'm not very familiar, I would avoid discussing what Flux is. But the principle is that the state values are immutable. And you can only update it by setting a new state value. If we consider just one store, it's one-way data flow. We dispatch updates to the store, and the store notifies the up updates. All right, very basic, very simple workflow. I like it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So what kind of principles did you leave out, if any, and, and why? I think we didn't lift anything. But for example, Redux is probably known as Flux with reducers. From the implementation perspective, one of the biggest differences from Redux is that Zastan doesn't require reducers to update states. Using reducers is optional. Zastan is trying to be unopinionated about how to use and it's left to developers. All right. Something uh, also that uh, kind of caught my eye from the readme is that mm -hmm. uh, you claim to solve some issues from uh, other libraries or that other libraries are not tackling in regards to state management like Zombie Child or React concurrency, or even context loss. Can you kind of elaborate a bit on each one of these and explain how common these problems are? Because I, honestly, I've never heard about them, but they <laughs> sound like, uh, not, not to me, they don't sound common, but when they happen, they sound like a real problem. Yeah, exactly. They are not common problems. They are rare, but we state it as it was some real issues when we developed Zastan. So let me explain. 
Zombie child is an issue where you see some inconsistencies between parent and child components. That happens only temporarily, but it can cause errors. For example, suppose we have a store with a count property. A parent component uses the count value from the store and passes the value with props to a child component. The child component receives the value from the props and it can also read the value from the store. Say the count value changes from, from 0 to 1, the child component sees 0 from the parent with props and 1 from the store. This is the inconsistency we can see temporarily. It sometimes becomes a problem with apps like Todo's app. If a parent component has a list of to-do IDs and passes one of IDs to a child component, the child component may receive an ID that no longer exists. Or well, concurrency is something React 18 finally introduced. Basically, there can be some inconsistencies between different components if we use a common mutable source, which in our case is a global state. For example, a mouse position is a mutable source. If one component reads a mouse position pointer position and another component reads it again, you will see some inconsistencies. This can happen in React 17, but it can happen more in React 18 with concurrency. Usually, this happens temporarily, and in that case, it shouldn't be a big issue. Context loss is an issue with multiple renderers. Some of the famous custom renderers include React PDF and React 3 Fiber. React context isn't shared between multiple renderers, which means context loss. It's a known problem. For example, when you, ca when you use React 3 Fiber, use context is useless because you can't read the context value that is set in the root component. Yeah, this is a known limitation of React context. All right, definitely um, some interesting problems to solve, especially the zombie child I can see it happening if you're not careful there. So, yeah. Something else that by using Susten and kind of making some tests and, and even like working on on the compatibility that uh, we had appropriately added to track state through Susten, I noticed that, that you define state as not really data, but also like functionality. You can define the methods, the actions inside the state uh, to modify it. So if you're not careful, you can definitely overwrite all existing methods from your state when cleaning your state object, for instance. But why take this approach instead of keeping state only around data, like many others define it, and leave the actions that deal with it somewhere else? Yeah, I think this is an interesting question because I didn't notice someone may confuse it. I think this is a typical approach taken in React hooks. It's often a pattern that the custom hook returns state value with functions in a single state object, like in with use state. I think Zastan takes the same pattern, so it makes sense. However, I'm recently suggesting to separate method outside of state object as a new pattern and because it allows code splitting better, as the usage is unopinionated, both are varied patterns. All right. And this is a question I always ask to developers that come here to talk about state. Mostly, mm -hmm. they've, mostly they've developed their own libraries, and so they're used to or they have like a, a predefined like mindset of, you know, what it means to deal with state inside React. So I'd like to know what you think about that. So should developers go straight into something lightweight like Sustan or maybe try like, you know, uh, more complex 
solutions like uh, Redux or Redux Toolkit, or maybe like first start with your state and a combination with context. So what, what would be your recommendation here? Yeah, it's a difficult question. <laughs> my, underst my understanding of the React component model is basically everything should be modularized. So basically, we should prefer use state as much as possible. And context can be used to avoid prop drilling. And it works to share the state between components from, from, the, from use state. And only when if you need to have some kind of states outside components, a global state library such as Dustin should help. All right, awesome. So what are the plans for future versions of Sustan? Uh, you mentioned that the API is close to being done, that is very mature, and that you want to keep it minimal. So there, are, I'm guessing there are still some, there's still some work to do, or can you tell us uh, what improvements you're working on? What changes do you think would improve the library? Yeah, the biggest missing piece is documentation. We now have some contributors working on docs. Because the library itself is unopinionated, we need best practices for typical cases. I'm also interested in the ecosystem. There are some third-party libraries, but I want to encourage creating more. For the next version v5, I will probably drop supporting older React versions. If we can only support React 18 and up, the bundle size will be much smaller because we can now use native use sync external store. This is just an idea and nothing is fixed though. All right, so we're getting like exclusive to what's coming on Susan, so I like that. Finally, I left the best question for the last. Uh, for last. So I know that, you, again, you were not there when the, the library was created, but do you know what was the inspiration for the mascot, for the bear? And, and if it has a name, because I haven't been able to find it anywhere. I'm not sure why it's bear, but if you read the readme, you, you see many bear words, so it's somehow yeah. related, bear necessities. I don't think it has an official name. Maybe we call it Zustan Bear. <laughs> yeah, it's already created by someone before uh, before me joining the project. All right, fair enough. All right, so let's now jump into the quick round section of the show. And I'll ask you mm -hmm. three questions I ask all guests on the show. So the first one will be, what is the best advice you ever received? Yeah, good question. Well, developing open source software is more documenting than coding. And it is true because when you, when you use a library, for example, you will read docs first, not the code. So people would read code af after they are somehow interested in it. That's true. That's yeah. true. That's definitely true. All right. So what is the most exciting project you worked on? Yeah. I'm recently focusing on developing Jotai. As I said, Zastan is almost complete, but Jotai is a little bigger and it has more room for improvements. All right, so we'll have to check it out as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is one thing you wish you knew when you started coding that you eventually picked up over the years? Yeah, this is a tough question. Okay. <laughs> I think I wish I knew what program programming language lasts how long. It is still something I wish to know, but we can't predict the future. So it doesn't matter if you code alone, but it matters if you collaborate or do jobs with coding. Fair enough. And finally, can you tell our audience where they can find you if they want to know on what you're working on, you know, about Shodai, Susdan, or any other of the libraries that you work on? Yeah, I basically share my all, all of my work on GitHub and I tweet on Twitter, and there's my Discord server. I maintain several project libraries, and I also have very small experimental projects. So please feel free to check them out. And if some of them are interested to you, let's collaborate. Awesome. We'll add links to all those, the GitHub, Twitter, and Discord servers on the show notes, so people can find you there. 
All right. Yes. And that is it. Thank you, Daishi, Thank for you. coming in on the show and, and talking about Sustan. Hopefully, anyone who didn't know about the library will, will be interested in checking it out. So I hope they like it. Yep, absolutely. Uh, it's very it's very easy to pick up, actually. I, I picked it up, so it's got to be easy. <laughs> Anyway, so thank you again and everyone else listening. Thank you for listening. Catch you on the next one. And that's a wrap for this episode. Thank you so much for listening. And if you haven't yet, take 10 seconds and leave a review of the show on your podcasting app. It will help us grow and reach more developers. And while you're at it, follow us on Twitter at The20MinuteJS. This episode was brought to you by Open Replay, an open source session replay platform for developers. Visit openreplay.com to know more. And I'll see you back here next week.